What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com, bringing home the bacon NFL DFS video. We are going to discuss Thursday Night Football. We're going to check it out. We're going to look at all the plays, as you can see on the screen. We're going to look at the matchup tool. We're going to look at everything. Then we're going to jump into DraftKings, and we're going to look and try to build maybe something that makes sense. So if that is something that you're interested in, stick around. If you've never been here before, it's kind of what we do. We go through everything. We try to be as uh, thorough as possible, and hopefully you learn something. If you do, hit that like and follow button on all of our social media. You can find down below. If you want to check us out, fantasyteamadvisor.com is the website. You go to fantasyteamadvisor.com, hit FTA+. Plus. We have $24.99 for a month, or currently we have a couple of coupon codes left. If you click on the yearly pass, normally $199, you can get it for $75 if you use the promo code THURSDAY. All one word, all capital letters, all the time. So, we're hopefully, we, we can help you out. So, if you want to go check us out, fantasyteamadvisors.com is the website. We have a ton of free information. We have NFL, MLB, a little bit of MLB left, obviously, um, PGA, We've got NASCAR, we've got MMA. We also have, obviously, NBA starting up next Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? I think it's Tuesday. It's the 24th. Um, so we'll have that. So uh, be on the lookout. We're very excited. We'll hopefully be able to bring you as much premium content as we possibly can. Another way to get uh, premium FTA Plus from us, be a subscriber to this channel. Leave a comment so the YouTube comment picker can pick you up. And if this video gets at least, any video gets at least 50 likes, you have a chance to win a free week of DFS content. If any of our videos get at least 100 likes, you have a chance to win a free month, 125 likes, and leave a comment, you have a chance to win a yearly pass. Or 150 likes on any video, you have a chance to win a lifetime pass. Normally worth $4.99. All you got to do is be a subscriber to the YouTube channel, leave a comment, and hit the like button so we can hit 150. So, that being said, <clears throat> it's Thursday. It's prime time. It's I'm not in love with this game. Um, as of the making of this video, which is 7.45 a.m. on Thursday, the over-under is currently 40, and I believe the last 12 games the Saints have been in, it's been under every time. I read a weird stat. Um, 40 is a lower one, um, which I'm actually surprised that... Uh, it doesn't make sense to me because the Saints currently hold a 20.27 implied team total. The Jaguars hold a 19.75. Oh, it opened. Okay. It did open up at a 42. It opened up at 42. It's dropped down to 40. Uh, the Saints or the Jaguars opened up as a one point favorite and now it's flipped to the Saints as a one-point favorite in this game. So definitely kind of watch the uh, line movement on this one. Honestly, <clears throat> to be completely transparent, I don't have a read on this game um, with who's going to win. If you're sports betting, like who's going to win, who's going to come out on top, the over-under. Again, like I said, the Saints games, I believe they're like 0-12 against the... Uh, or the last like 12. It's a really... Uh, strange uh, thought that I never would have thought about, but uh, the, the games just go under. Um, so that's put in the back of your mind. If you're kind of interested in stuff like that, we could definitely um, kind of think about it. But that being said, let's check out the matchup tool. Let's check out the um, what we've got going on. So we have our matchup tool here, week seven. It will go through um all of the games are in there i have not updated the over unders or the implied team totals yet usually i will update that saturday or early sunday morning so it is as current as possible so let's just take a look at this at everything right now so we've got we got jacksonville uh, we got trevor lawrence coming in um he's actually rushing he's rushed 18 percent of all the snaps that he's played this season but last week he rushed 10 percent. obviously he's not getting targeted he's the quarterback then you've got etn who's actually really come on strong lately um he's rushed in 62 percent of all the offensive snaps for jacksonville so far this season 62 percent in last week's game he's actually getting targets as well 11 percent 11 and a half percent uh target rate on the season last week we saw uh 
10.71%. Tank Bigsby is, he's there. Um, I, he just, I don't think he's going to make, be a factor unless ETN gets hurt. And if you're making like 150 lineups for this showdown, I'm okay with Tank's Big, Tank Bigsby in there. I just don't think, um, I just don't think he's going to be a factor. And you can see New Orleans defense has been pretty good. They rank five against the quarterback. They rank five against the running back. They rank uh, nine against uh, the wide receiver, and they rank one against the opposing tight end. So they're a very good defense. This is why the over-under is currently at 40, and it, it's gone down. Um, I wouldn't use Dearness Johnson. He not He's not bringing anything to the table for us in this showdown. So then we get to the wide receivers. Which wide receiver is going to play a factor? Is it going to be Calvin Ridley, who's had flashes of really good games, and then he's been shut down by the secondaries, which they could in this one because, again, they're ranked ninth out of 32. Uh, Christian Kirk had a good game last week, I believe. We'll dig into the numbers and look at that. Uh, he's when when they're double teaming Ridley and and they're putting their focus on him. Christian Kirk is in a good spot there, so that is definitely something to look at. Jamal Agnew is a cheaper option. Um, he'd be more of a GPP option. Tim Jones, I'm not looking at. Both Agnew and Jones played only two percent of the snaps last week. Did not see a target. That is definitely something to look at. Uh, they're obviously not rushing either. Uh, Evan Ingram has been a really good tight end this year, but Saints have been really good against the tight end. So I wouldn't use Brenton Strange. I would not use Luke Farrell. So if you are going with a tight end, obviously it would be Evan Ingram. Kind of monitor that situation. Doesn't have the best of matchup, but as we saw, he had he saw 25% of all of the targets last week. He saw more targets than Christian Kirk. He saw 3%, 3.5% less than Calvin Ridley. Um, and that's it. So he is Trevor Lawrence's safety blanket. I mean, most tight ends are the safety blanket for the uh, quarterback. It's especially for Evan Ingram here. Then we look at the New Orleans side of the ball. So you can see Jacksonville. They rank towards the bottom here. Um, I still don't understand why we see Derek Carr as a starter. And we're, we'll dig into the numbers a little bit when we get into over on DraftKings. Um, he has a good matchup here. Uh, Jacksonville ranks 20th out of 32 against the opposing quarterback. So bottom tier there. They are good against the, t the running back, but I really love Alvin Kamara. Um, Taysom Hill, you you're not going to use him. Um, he is, but the problem is so weird because the problem is he's getting targets, 17% of the targets. He tied target-wise with Kamara last week. You got Kamara, Kendra Miller, and Jamal Williams. Obviously, it's going to be Kamara here. Uh, they rank seventh against the opposing running back, so they're good against them, but he also takes passes. So that's what gives a bump up to him for me is that he's catching targets. He's also rushing a ton as well. So he rushed 76% of all of the uh, rushing last week in that game. I wouldn't use Miller. I wouldn't use Williams. Then we get to the wide receiver. What wide receiver is going to have a good game? They can spread it out. And if one gets double teamed, we, I mean, Michael Thomas, uh, he is wide receiver too. But if you remember just a few years ago before he got hurt, wide receiver, I mean, he was a stud. He was going early in drafts. He, he's a stud. He, he is priced down. Um, so you can still, you can still take a look and kind of feel confident about certain things. So, I mean, Michael Thomas, I'm okay with. Rashid Shahid, good. He is good to go as well. I, I feel confident with him. I wouldn't use Keith Kirkwood. It, it's just not worth it there. Didn't see any of the targets last week. Uh, didn't play. Um, he, he played 18% of the snaps last week. Did not see a target. You can see that Jacksonville ranks 17th out of 32 against the opposing wide receiver. So they've got a good matchup there. So do the tight ends. Which tight end to use? I think Jimmy Graham's just kind of... They brought him back in a feel-good story. I, I don't think – I think he has it one touchdown this year. Uh, Foster Moreau is their tight end one. As you can see on DraftKings, Jacksonville ranks 20th out of 32. And on FanDuel, Jacksonville ranks 22 out of 32 against the opposing tight end. So Foster Moreau, Moreau makes a good option as well. So just to kind of look at that, those are the top plays. Now we do get into the weeds. We get into the – What's the word? Rot I don't know. Uh, players, I'd say rotten bacon. The the GPP, the contrarian plays that we could look at. So I want to look at to see which players we feel confident about with a captain or MVP, depending on what website you're on, and then what players make sense for flex. So 
Just off the top, Kamara, obviously at the top. He's 15,600, which if you remember last Thursday, if you watched the video, uh, Mahomes was like 19,000 something. And it was very hard to build a lineup through there because you it's that expensive. So we've got a little bit of leeway here. Um, again, it doesn't look like it's going to be a high scoring game. Um, so we need to be able to target the players correctly and figure out the ones that are going to get the targets, ones that are going to build that lineup through. So that being said, Kamara here, 15,600. We come in game log wise. He's played three weeks in a row. Looks good to go. He's getting the attempts. He's getting in there. Um, the yardage is there. He's getting targets. I mean, he had 14 targets in his week, his first week back, only three against New England, and then eight targets against Houston secondary there. He's had success. Um, I, I love his matchup here. I feel really confident about this. I don't care about the opposing defense. He's a runner, handy pass catcher. So he is a fantastic option for a captain spot. Same thing with ETN. Like I said, if he's been feasting. You can see against Buffalo, which was supposed to be a fantastic defense. Now, we've talked about this. The jet lag is real. The reason, the fact that they went to England two days before the game instead of maybe five or six days to get acclimated, I feel like played a part. But Bill's defense was supposed to be good. He eviscerated them. 136 yards on the ground, 48 in the air, 39.4 fantasy points. He had two touchdowns last week on the ground. He had two touchdowns against Buffalo. And then he had a touchdown in week one. So he is averaging pretty good. Um, he's averaging about 75.2 yards per game, 19.7 fantasy points. I do like him here. Obviously, with an MVP or uh, with captain, you get more points. It's the But let's just look at it. He makes sense. Um, I, I don't think today is a day to get cute with uh, a low-priced guy, which is what I'm talking about. I could see a defense being a good defense as well to be a captain spot. Um, other ones just depends. Olave, I don't mind. He was, um, so yeah, earlier this week he was designated injured with a toe injury of some sort, probably turf toe or something like that. Um, limited practice, but he doesn't have that designation going into this game. 13,500, I like that there. Um, he does save you, um, 2000 uh, if you don't go with Kamara. So Olave makes sense, a lot of sense for me. So does Ridley. Ridley is his the wide receiver one there. Um, he is expensive though. Um, but we drop him down. We we save even more. 12,600 compared to 135 with Olave and 156 with Kamara. So I really like uh, Ridley. He makes sense. He's getting the targets if you dig into his numbers a little bit. Um had eight targets, eight, two, seven, eight. So he's averaging right about, if you look at it, and then 11 his week one, which came back with a bang. So he had a good week against Buffalo. Everyone on uh, that team had a good week against Buffalo because I'm, I'm just going to go with the jet lag. He does rush a little bit, uh, jet sweep and stuff like that. Not the most effective, but if he can get up there, um, Calvin Ridley makes sense. I think you'll have lower ownership with Ridley than you will with either ETN or Kamara. So he completely makes sense for me. I don't mind him at all. Another one would be Christian Kirk. If you go down to 12000 then you're able to pay up at other places for the flex. Uh, Christian Kirk, if Ridley is double teamed and you know hurt, we got six targets there, 8, 12, 6, 14. So he's getting the targets. Um, he only has two touchdowns, though. That's the only problem. But he has 33 receptions through six weeks. So I'm fairly confident with him. Um, don't fret about that. I, I feel good there. Uh, he would be a contrarian option because I think a lot of people are going to be on the people we've already talked about. Olave, ETN, Kamara, like Ridley. They're going to be on them. You can f get a little bit above the field with Christian Kirk. Not saying it's going to be 100% effective, but you could in that situation. Um, Evan Ingram makes sense, like I said, but again, they're really good against the tight end. So if we look into his numbers, he is all the way down here at 8,700 for a captain, which is nuts. Um, he's getting eight plus, like almost averaging eight targets a game. Whether or not he brings that in for a touchdown, he does not have a touchdown this week or this year so far. So that is the one knock on him. He is their tight end one. Um, he's getting the targets. He's just you know his most amount of yards in the game was 67 against Houston, and he didn't bring anything in. 
that's my only problem with him. So I don't know if I'll be very heavy on him. I might, if I'm making like 20 plus lineups, Ingram probably finds his way into one of them for a captain, but it, it just really depends. Shahid it would be a dart throw, basically. Um, where is he at? Where is Shahid at? I mean, he's 7,500. Um, he's getting, you know, it's, this is the problem. He's going up and down with targets. He is rushing as well. He has, he had a touchdown last week. He uh, has two touchdowns on the year so far. Um, so he had six targets last week, only two against New England. Again, they were up 34. They won 34 nothing. so they pulled their starters. So that's definitely something to look at. Uh, but you can see he's got those two big, three big games and then duds here. So GPP-wise, Shahid, maybe. I mean, it is a complete... Close your eyes, throw a dart at the dartboard, hope it hits. I don't think it's going to hit. Um, some weird things would have to happen in this game for that to happen. Um, but he is an option that I think about. The other ones would be the defenses. Um, if we just look, like Saints defense is really good. Uh, if they could get a couple of sacks or interceptions or both, they could obviously put up some points like against New England, two interceptions, two sacks, 24 fantasy points. Um, and that was at a normal price. That wasn't at a, a showdown price. Uh, but that makes sense. Uh, they do have eight interceptions on the year with 13 sacks. So they're getting points. Um, and then Jacksonville, I probably... Um, I mean, they had three interceptions against Indy. That was Gardner Minshew. Uh, they do have six interceptions in their last three games. Um, so they haven't been too bad. GPP-wise... I'm okay with the Jacksonville uh, wide receiver or, uh, defense for captain, uh, but I probably will have them more for flex. I, I'd say it's probably 95% flex for both defenses, 5% for a captain spot. And then, I mean, the same plays go for flex, but then we want, where do we want to go with other plays? I think imperative uh, quarterback, obviously. Uh, Derek Carr back to back had 353 yards against Houston. Uh, ended up losing that game. Again, it's really the game script. If they're going to be behind, but the problem is the <clears throat> the game script as of now looks like Saints are supposed to be ahead. Only one, uh, only minus one, so they're not that favored. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, again, it's Thursday night. Primetime games have been more duds than stud games. That's kind of another thing to think about. Um and with the Saints not hitting the over in like 12 straight games, definitely something to look at. Um, other ones that look like uh, that makes sense. So uh, before today, I was going to say Zay Jones, but he is out now. So which it does bump up Ridley. It bumps up um, just everyone above him it, with him being out. It bumps it up a little bit for them. Jamal Williams is on the IR, but it looks like he will be returning. Um, well, this is something the crazy eyes. Every time I see his picture, it's crazy. Uh, it is looking like he did practice, but he might not play tonight. Uh, so this is definitely something to look at. Again, they have to, I think they have to say if he's going to play by like 4 Eastern, the day of the game, if it's a night game. Um, I, he wouldn't make an option for me, though. It, I doubt he, they'll probably ease him back in if he is even playing this week. So he makes kind of a little bit of sense. Um, I mean, if you go down here and you look at flex options, ones that, I mean, we're not using these dudes. Y you can find the scrubs here that maybe you can throw something in. But, I mean... Jimmy Graham, if maybe at 600 again, though, like I said, he hasn't done much. He's got one target, uh, two targets on the year. I don't even know why they signed him if they're not even going to utilize him at all. Um, but sometimes that's kind of what we see. Um, he's playing the snaps. He's just not getting targeted. Uh, so Jimmy Graham, if he's in there 600, I'm OK. Again, if you're only making like if you're making less than 20 lineups, I would not put these duds in there at all. Um, Foster Moreau, I don't mind, 3,200. He makes a good flex option. Um, defenses, like I said, kickers always make an uh, option here. You never know if you're going to get a kicking game or not, especially if, I mean, you can see he made three of three um, field goals last week against Indy. 
51 was his longest. He got two 40 to 49, 150 plus, and then extra points got 17. So he's always in a good option. Um, the kickers are always there. Uh, they make sense. Group, groupy. I don't really know how you say his name, but yeah, I mean, it just depends on how the game goes. That that's the problem, and it, it it's on the shoulders of Derek Carr. Whether or not we're going to get a good good game out of Derek Carr, I don't know. So. Those are basically the plays. I mean, I'm not going. We've got a cheat sheet over on the website, but like and Michael Thomas, like I said, cheap, cheap option at seven thousand. So if we were try to build, let's just try to build. We got Michael Thomas. Let's go. Let's go Kamara as. Oops. Let's go Kamara as your captain. Michael Thomas. We got Derek Carr. Okay. Then let's go Kirk Lawrence. And that gives us a thousand. And then that's when you come down here and you find, is it a Strange? Is it a Ag, uh, Graham Agnew? Um, see, this is why it, it's kind of hard to build. Um, so let's not go Kamara for captain. Let's or for let's go. We could go with a Ridley. So that saves 3,000. So then that brings us to 4,000 for flex. And then that brings us to a defense or Foster Moreau. Okay, so then that opens up a little bit. So that is, you have both, you have both of the uh, quarterbacks. You have Ridley at the captain. You have Lawrence thrown to Ridley. You have Michael Thomas with Derek Carr. And then if you want to go, um, we go Foss Moreau. So now Lawrence is throwing to two guys and cars thrown to two guys as well then you have the quarterback situation so this one isn't a bad lineup um that's just kind of the thought you build out so then you do have 800 if, if you do want to take moreau out of there we go up to jaguars defense if you think they're going to do good um i don't uh you can't get the saints defense in there at 5400 so that would be if maybe you take let's say you take it really just depends. It, it, you got to look at the lines. So kind of monitor the lines throughout the day, see how it goes, and then you can kind of get a feel for what Vegas is thinking and build a script through there to build your lineup out. So that is what we're looking at here for Thursday Night Football. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, get those down below. We'll try to help you out as much as possible. Go check out fantasyteamadvisors.com. We have baseball content. We have football content. We have everything. PGA had already started. We will have MMA NASCAR this week. I think there's three weeks left of NASCAR. I think there's three weeks left. Um, so we've got that going on. Um, and NBA starts next week, which we're very excited about to get back into the rhythm of doing a video every single day for you for NBA. Still don't know... Um, I don't know what you're looking for in NBA videos uh, like we did with baseball and all-in analysis. So still kind of trying to figure out what we're going to do with NBA. So that being said, good luck on this slate. And as always, let's bring home some bacon. Peace.